the ISPCA has been going on for over 60 years in Ireland. It, uh, it's the affiliated body, it's a body rather for all the affiliates uh, around Ireland, about 19 of them doing the same work. Uh, I mean, SPCAs in, in, in all cases are society prevention of cruelty to animals. We probably like to think that the the CP is also, you know, a compassion element um, because uh, over the years we've seen that people are beginning to have more compassion for animals. The, the main work we do, we have a call centre here where we take in over a thousand calls every single month uh, related to cruelty cases. Uh, the ethos, I suppose, I would wrap it up by saying it's about rescuing, uh, rehabilitation and responsible rehoming, the four oars. I would say, and responsible rehoming is important because finding homes is relatively easy, but you find the animal coming back because the person perhaps didn't realise what they were taking on. And that would lead us probably to the next um, area that we try to focus on, which is education. Video such as this is very, very useful. A big problem we find is overpopulation. Um, everybody loves you know, kittens and little dogs, they're, 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 and they are fantastic. But People don't realise a cat, for example, as young as four or five months can give birth. They're still only kittens themselves, and yet they're giving birth. They can give birth up to three times every year. So overpopulation is a big, big issue. And the only way of dealing with it, I think, is education. And that education being that we should encourage people to neuter and spay their pets so that there are less of them out there looking for homes. Well, I oversee our team of inspectors who work throughout the country investigating allegations of cruelty primarily. Al along with our, uh, some alliances we have with other SPCAs, we, we cover the whole country. So if anybody contacts our National Animal Helpline, we'll ensure that the information gets through to the correct person. I mean, the, we, we're there to, to, to check if, if the law has been broken. Most of the time that isn't the case, that things aren't that severe, and we'll deal with the situation by means of advice or instruction. But you know, in severe cases, we will look to instigate a prosecution. We can't afford, as a charity, to take the prosecutions ourselves. But we will prepare a file and submit it to the Gardaí, who will then uh, instigate the prosecution. Well, we see all manner of things. I mean, you're talking about every animal under the sun, really, from small domestics to equines, farm animals, exotics. So you've got the, the whole range of animals, and then indeed the whole range of problems of welfare. I mean, it could be a starving animal, it could be a skin condition, some sort of illness. With equines we get a lot of problems with hooves if they're not uh, adequately cared for. So it could be anything, every day is different. We could have quite healthy animals coming in and they need very little care, preventative care. So we provide them with worm and flea treatments, vaccinations, neuter them and then eventually rehome them. And that can be quite quick, but more often than most it's intensive treatment is required for injuries, um, skin conditions, um, and the likes of which will require much more ongoing care and treatment and will take a few weeks for them to be rehabilitated and be able to be rehomed. Is prevention the main thing? Is preventative care the main issue for you? Certainly for us because if, if it was preventive we wouldn't be dealing with the problems that we're dealing with, especially with skin issues like uh, mange and ringworm and the likes of these. A lot of the things that we come across they're neglected, you know, and if you go in with your routine vaccinations, uh, fleeing, worming, all oh, that is basic care for your pet, you know, uh, these things wouldn't arise. And in a lot of situations, uh, uh, animals that come in here, they're probably a, a big issue would be that they're not fed, they're not getting enough to eat, you know. So we see uh, an awful lot of, you know, anorexic dogs coming in, or, or um, dogs that are underweight. Ava, we're in the isolation section here, and before any members of the public see it and want to come here, it's strictly closed to the public. What sort of work is, is done here? Uh, basically, all the animals have to go through isolation unit. That's where the assessment of their physical and mental health is happening, and a routine work. That's here they are seen by the vet. They are treated for parasites, for internal and external parasites. They are vaccinated here, microchipped and any treatment for injuries, diseases is starting here and is monitored here. So basically the stay is between one to two weeks, but in cases of mothers being with cats or dogs, they are here up to five, six weeks until the weaning process is starting and you can move them into the main areas. Okay, Dynamo was found two months ago. He had very severe burns as so basically area where he was living, which was a trailer. I was set up in a fire. You can see on this picture 
that is extremely severe injury, extremely painful. During the whole treatment, which meant to be basically daily baths of the wound, daily bandages, additional treatment like antibiotics, anti-inflammatory, Dynamo was just perfect, perfect patient, very lovely, very cooperative. And look at him two months later, and he's now looking for a good, loving home as he's ready. You can see yourself that the wound is completely healed now. We are just waiting for the growth of hair to to happen and uh, pretty much it's only now a little bit aesthetic problem but Dynamo is perfectly healed. And how, long more does it, how long more does Dynamo have to stay in isolation? Uh, another week. Another week? Another week, so basically it was exactly two months and one week. Barbara, we're in the cattery section here. How, how many cats in total are um, there? There are about 70 cats and kittens at the present moment. Um, and do you get many cats? I mean, are there a wide range of cats coming through from all over the country coming here? Um, we, we get quite a, a few um, brought in from the public and also um, cats with kittens that have been dumped. Um, you know, there's, there's all different, a great variety of, of cats come in. With, with would the majority of cats be injured or would they be just abandoned? No, no, not many are injured. Um, occasionally we get them that the um, paw has been caught in the collar. Um, but most of the time they're, they're abandoned or, you know, there are other reasons where people, you know, have, you know, go away and we just leave them, so yeah. Are there big problems uh, rehoming with these cats? It is, in these difficult times it is more, you know, more difficult to rehome. But um, the, the main problem is the lack of understanding about neutering. If a lot of okay. the cats were neutered, there wouldn't be the the problems of the great number of kittens and then the problems of rehoming. So neutering is a, you know, a great yeah, thing. Yeah. Would you say uh, you rehome them successfully in a majority of cases? Oh yes, 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 they, they do find good homes and then um, if there's an accident or anything and the, the people lose their cat, they, they always come back and they're very nice. Uh, Barbara, you're a volunteer as well, I'm assured you're more or less a member of staff at this point. <laughs> yes, I've been volunteering on a regular basis for just over two years now and, and I really enjoy it. How often are you here? Um, I'm here most Saturdays and then if they're short um, I will come in, I don't mind when I come in or or what I do, so I'm just happy to come in as and when wanted. For the love of it, really. Yes, <laughs> yes, I love, many, love, love cats. Do you have many animals yourself? Right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. A lot of foster ones and foster dogs and my own dogs and cats as well. Generally, the animals that come in here, the horses, ponies and donkeys, are good cases from our inspectors. So they're usually in a pretty bad state, usually emaciated. They might have severe injuries, badly overgrown hooves. So our main job here in the stables is rehabilitation, to physically rehabilitate them and also to handle them and encourage them to be um, happy around people and to have their treatment and not be stressed. What sort of resources do you have here? Uh, what you see here, we have five stables, um, we have a field shelter uh, and a couple of paddocks. And we have very little facilities for the, for the horses, it's really a very small equine unit and it only caters for about six to eight equines but we constantly run way past our capacity, usually about 24 to 30. At present you have how many? We have 24 at the moment. And the, uh, the main equine centre is in Mallow? That's right, yes. They have, a, they have more facilities there and better land for equines as well. So usually what we do is once we have them rehabilitated, we send them down to our equine centre in Mallow to be rehomed. This is a, a good example of the type of overgrown hooves that we get in. Um, this would be fairly common. As you can see, they're hugely overgrown. There's seven, eight, even ten inches of overgrown hoof there. Um, as you can see here, how rounded it is. It should be a flat surface for them to walk on, so they're almost like walking on rockers, and it's incredibly painful for them. And this can be avoided simply by getting a farrier to trim the hooves every eight to ten weeks. Are people surprised by the sight of these things? Uh, yeah, we use them for our school tours a lot, so it's interesting to see the kids' reaction. Most of them don't know what it is. Um, Unfortunately, we get so many donkeys and ponies coming in with feet like this that you know you kind of have to think that maybe people aren't surprised to see them like this. But this is not this is not normal at all. This is Spirit. Uh, she came in with um, very neglected hooves and also laminitis, which is a condition that affects the interior of the hoof. And she actually has a broken bone in her foot. So our master farrier here is 
rebuilding her foot and uh, he's going to put a shoe on as well and it'll help her to um, balance her foot properly and also help to support the foot until the fracture heals hopefully. Is it a painful process for the pony? This well? process is not, no, the actual fracture herself and laminitis is incredibly painful. She was in an awful lot of pain when she arrived but she's under veterinary treatment and is on anti-inflammatories, painkillers and she's also had a sedation for this treatment so that she's not frightened by it. Well, the kennels were built for accommodation of 30 dogs, but at the moment we have close to 60. So, kind of track of lock with dogs at the moment. You're well over capacity, yeah. as in other areas. Yeah, yeah. What, uh, what sort of injuries do you find uh, with dogs? Uh, we get all kinds of injuries from car accidents, you know. Majority now of the time we get more emaciated dogs than the actual injuries itself. Um, but we still have a lot of different injuries now. This is ne Neil you were showing us earlier. He was quite badly starved. Or yeah, he was in very bad condition now. He was um, very badly emaciated, crawling with parasites, basically on death's door now when he came in. Um, but he's made a great recovery now and He's doing really well. He's gained six kilos in, in two months, so That's he's on the, the road to recovery. It's two months ago he arrived here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you know where he arrived from? Or, or uh, no, we the inspectors have brought him in. So. And is he is he ready to be rehoused? He's now? up for rehoming now. Yeah, he's reserved at the moment, so hopefully going to his new home then. So the majority of dogs in here are successfully rehomed. Oh yeah, we get all of them rehomed now. Yeah.